Welcome, I'm Jordia Benjamin, Merkin Senior Coordinator of Programs and Audience Engagement at Covey College Museum of Art in Waterville, Maine. This is Artful Movements. Artful Movements is a part of the museum's wellness initiative under the larger program, Let Art Inspire. In this program, we select a work of art from our collection and we pair it with a yoga pose. Before we begin the yoga portion of this program, let's first visit the artwork that has inspired this month's theme, Time to Connect. Today, we look at the work of Ana Mendieta, Silhueta Sangrieta, 1975. My art is grounded on the belief in one universal energy which runs through everything, from insect to man, from man to specter, from specter to plant, from plant to galaxy. Ana Mandieta. Between 1974 and 1980, the Cuban-American artist Ana Mandieta created more than 100 silhouettes, photographic and filmatic, records of earth body sculptures she enacted in Iowa and Mexico. In the Silhouetta and other earlier works in the series, Mandieta mobilizes her body as actor, sight, and space, incorporating it into a variety of natural environments. Mandieta's 1975 film Silhouetta Sangrieta, which translates to Bloody Silhouette, represents a transitional moment in the Silhouetta series. Made in Iowa City, this silent two-minute film documents the artist's actions in the presence and absence of her body, cutting from the artist shown as prone and nude to a hollow echoing of her archaic pose. The silhouette reappears as a reservoir for unnaturally bright red fluid. And finally, we see the artist face down, partially submerged. Mandieta opted to use paint rather than blood, which was a common medium for the artist. The paint acted as a heightened contrast to the soil. As Mandieta described in 1981, I've been carrying out a dialogue between the landscape and the female body based on my own silhouette. I believe this has been a direct result of having been torn from my homeland, Cuba, during my adolescence. I am overwhelmed by the feeling of having been cast from the womb slash nature. My art is the way I reestablish the bonds that unite me to the universe. It is a return to the maternal source. Through my earth body sculptures, I become one with the earth. I become an extension of nature, and nature becomes an extension of my body. The Yoga Pose The fish pose is a hard opening back bend that opens the throat, chest, and abdomen while stretching the hip flexors and intercostals. The benefits of the pose are mobilized and strengthens the upper back and neck, and opens the shoulders in extension and stretches the chest. Caution, people with back or neck injuries should consult an experienced teacher about modifications using a block or folding blanket for support or just avoid this pose. If you have migraines or high or low blood pressure, proceed with caution. The still posture of Mandieta in the Silhouetta Sangrieta is similar to the fish yoga pose. As you soften your eyes, jaws, and throat, imagine yourself floating, being supported by the living water beneath you. It is believed that this pose makes you float when you perform it, whether on water or not, because you connect with your environment and spark your Kundalini energy. Both in some ways promote the important connection between body and the earth floor as one lifts and grounds their body into the earth. 
This connection is both natural and sacred. Now, let's join our partners at School Street Yoga who will lead us in our yoga practice. Hello, I'm Kathleen Haberstock, and we're moving into the yoga portion of Artful Movements. Welcome to School Street Yoga. Um, and we're going to be focusing on the breath today. But before we do that, I'd like to have you come into a yoga pose. This is called supported fish pose. So if you have a yoga block, go ahead and take it and you'll bring it um, to your mat. You're gonna lie down on this block. So you want a little room behind it and then bring your second yoga block behind that. So you have the one block at the lowest level and one block at the medium level. If you don't have a block, don't worry. Just take any blanket and go ahead and fold it. Roll it up into a burrito shape. So this is the other option. So you're either gonna lie on the burrito shaped blanket, and if it's too high, you can always lower it, or you're gonna lie on your block. And if you have a blanket and a block, you can put the blanket on top of the block so that it's a little more cushy for you. So go ahead, whether it's the blanket or the block you're lying on, it's gonna go right under the shoulder blades. So just feeling the blanket or the block there under the shoulder blades. And then bring your head to the other block. And I've got it right now at the higher level. You can lower it down. If you're on a blanket, you can just have your head on the floor. Your arms can come out to the sides and begin breathing here. Noticing your inhale, noticing your exhale. There might be a little tingle in the arms, but your arms should not feel like they've fallen asleep. If they get to feel like too tingly, like they've fallen asleep, please come out of it and lie on your back. Otherwise, breathing here. Now, soles of the feet can be on the mat, mat's distance, and knees can touch. So feet are wide and knees touching. And just get in touch with the breath. Noticing the inhale, noticing the exhale. So I'm gonna come out, but I want you to stay here on your back. And just getting in touch with that breath. So Yogi Kripalu says, breath is not just vital for life. It is also the bridge between our body, our mind, and our spirit. And as we get in touch with the breath, it brings us into the present moment. So you might just take an inventory, notice what's going on in your mind, in your body. Notice if it's easy to drop in, breathing deeply, or if it's challenging. And you can notice without judging it. So no need to judge what's going on. Just notice it. Deepening the breath, I would ask you to notice the belly moving out as you breathe. And if you need to bring a hand there, go ahead. You could lie there and bring a hand onto the belly and feel the belly rise as you inhale and lower as you exhale. But once you've gotten in touch with that, just allow the arm to drop to the side again. Now you might find it's nice to bring soles of the feet together and knees apart. And so absolutely, you can be here, breathing deeply. And then I'll just ask you to notice the breath. We're gonna think of it as a three-part breath. So inhaling into the belly, the ribs, all the way up to the upper chest, to the clavicle, and then exhale, belly, ribs, and chest. So continuing that three-part breath, belly, ribs, and chest, and then releasing, 
belly first, then ribs, and then chest. Continuing that deep three-part breath. So in the word pranayama, the breath work that we do for yoga begins with prana. Prana is considered energy. And um, Yoganand says, this invisible force called energy influences all our perceptions. By changing the energy, the perceptions shift as well. So if we're able to increase our energy with pranayama or change it, then our view of the world can change. And if you find yourself obsessing or in a negative space, it's not that you will paint a false smile over that, but you might find that pranayama can shift your mood. Pranayama techniques help us detach from the objects that devour our energy. Detaching from the objects that devour our energy allows us to free up our energy for things we love. Three more deep breaths there. And then very slowly, drawing knees to touch, you're gonna roll to either side to remove the block. So, and in fact, you might sit up if you have, like I have a block and a blanket, it might be helpful to sit up and just move things out of the way. But then we'll find our way onto our backs once again. Coming back down and just noticing what it's like to release the back onto the ground now. Now, taking feet close to the hips, about sits bone distance apart, so about two fist distance apart with the feet. You can graze the heels with the tips of your fingers and then grab the outer edges of your mat. We're gonna come to bridge pose, Satubandasana. So beginning to shimmy shoulders under you a little bit, begin to lift the hips. Now, before we do this, we're gonna do a mantra. So on the inhale, raising up, I calm my body and mind. And on the exhale, coming down, I smile. Inhale, I calm my body and mind. Exhale, I smile. Inhale, I calm my body and mind. Exhale, I smile. One more like that. Just releasing that, bringing feet wide and let knees rock side to side. And then hug the knees in, give them a squeeze. We're gonna rock forward and back, forward and back up to a seat. We're gonna find our way to hands and knees. So we're gonna find our way to hands and knees. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Inhale, pull the floor away from you. Exhale, press the floor away from you. So we're pulling on the floor, moving the heart forward. I calm my body and mind as you inhale. And as you exhale, I smile. So you're just thinking this to yourself as you inhale and exhale. Coming to neutral in your own time, let's reach right arm and left leg back. Inhale, exhale, hug it in. Next time our arm and leg extend, keep them extended. You might bend the back knee and reach for the foot. If you've got the foot, lift the thigh and breathe into that. Mm -hmm. 
Letting that go, bringing hand and knee to the ground. But now we're gonna reach that right arm up to the sky. Inhale, exhale, reach it through like you could touch the wall. Inhale, reach it up to the ceiling. Exhale, reach it through. One more like that. This time, reach, reach, reach it through. Ear and shoulder to the mat. Left fingertips could be on the ground. You could lift the arm and bring the arm behind the right hip. Letting that hand back down, reaching it up on an inhale. Exhale it down. Coming to the other side, left arm and right leg, reach. Inhale, exhale, hug it in. Inhale, I calm my body and my mind. Exhale, I smile. You can always let the mantra go if it's not helpful. Next time arm and leg are extended, bend the back knee, reach for the foot or balance there. Press foot into hand, maybe lifting the thigh. Let that go, bringing hand and knee to the ground. Then lift the left arm on an inhale. Exhale, thread it through. Reach it up on an inhale. I calm my body and mind. Exhale, I smile as you reach through. One more like that. Lowering ear and shoulder to the mat, breathing here. Inhale, I calm my body and my mind. Exhale, I smile. Releasing the hand, reaching that left arm up and lowering it down. Now using your blocks perhaps to step the right foot between your hands. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and then find your low lunge, I mean your high lunge. So reaching the arms up, breathing here. Tee out the arms, twist, Back hand comes down, top arm lifts, and then cut that elbow across. Palm against palm. Rolling, top shoulder over bottom shoulder. You can always drop the back knee if you need to. Can you find the mantra here? Inhale, I calm the body and the mind. Exhale, I smile. Frame the front foot with your hands. Step the back foot in just enough to get the heel to the ground. We might raise the blocks up. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. One more like that. Finding a flat back again, maybe lowering the blocks, we're gonna raise the left arm first. So right hand stays down, left arm lifts. Lowering that hand down. Now we're gonna raise the right hand. First to the hip crease, draw it back. Roll the shoulder open, lift the arm. Both heels are grounding into the earth. Can you find your mantra again on your inhale and your exhale? Lowering back down. We'll step it forward and hang over the legs. Uttanasana, forward fold. So have a nice hang here for a few breaths. You might grab opposite elbows. You might sway. Bringing hands to frame your feet. Step, step back to plank. You can always lower the knees, 
or will lower knees, chest, and chin. Scrub through a cobra, lifting the heart, shoulder blades towards each other on the back, and then press it back to a down dog. Pedaling the feet, perhaps. We're going to step the left foot forward between the hands and find that high lunge on this side. So we're lifting up hands to hips, maybe arms up, and then tee out the arms and twist towards that front knee, towards the left. And on this side, reach back through that back arm, lift the front arm, and then cut that elbow across. Palm against palm. Frame the front foot with your hands. Step the back foot in enough to get the heel to the ground. Any height of block here, Inhale, flat back, exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back, exhale, fold. One more like that. Exhale, fold. Finding a flat back, maybe lowering your blocks, you're going to lift that right arm up. And then lower the right hand, bring the left thumb into the left hip crease, draw it back, roll the shoulder open, and lift that arm. Hugging inner thighs towards one another, grounding through both heels. Lowering that hand to the mat. <clears throat> Moving the blanket away if it's there, so you can just move it out of the way. And we'll step, step back to down dog. Coming to plank, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Up dog or cobra on an inhale. Exhale, lower down. Now you might clasp the hands behind your back. Reach the right leg back, reach the left leg back. Lifting the legs, lifting the chest, reaching knuckles back, breathing here. And lower down. Turn a cheek to the mat. Just melt for a moment. Finding your mantra, getting in touch with the breath. On the inhale, I calm my body and mind. On the exhale, I smile. And then pressing yourself back through a wide knee child's pose. Breathing there. Finding your way back to down dog, we'll walk the feet forward towards the center of the mat and then walk the hands back. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, little back bend. Exhale, palms to heart center. So you're just gonna turn to the long edge of your mat at the center of the mat. And then we'll take a wide straddle. So you might reach the heels as far apart as the wrists, maybe. Let's clasp hands behind back. Lift the heart, big inhale, exhale, fold. Knuckles reach overhead any amount. Let the hands go. Inhale, flat back. 
exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. One more like that. I calm my body and my mind, and on the exhale, I smile. Hands to the hips, rise all the way up, little back bend at the top. Coming back to center. So please turn the right toes 90 degrees and find a warrior two. Breathing here. So the idea of I smile is not pasting an emotion over yourself. It's not putting on a mask. You're getting in touch with what, you're acknowledging what your true feelings are in that moment, but you're also reminding yourself of what's possible. So facing over the right middle fingers, breathing here, Andrew Weiss says that it's like a North Star guiding you forward, this idea of I smile. So inhale, I calm the body and the mind. Exhale, I smile. Now try to keep your legs just as they are. Lift the front hand and tip back. Peaceful warrior. And then bringing forearm to thigh. Top arm cuts over the ear. Three breaths there. Tipping back, straighten the front leg. Reach the right arm up, and then reach, reach, reach it forward. Right hip crease tips back, comes down, triangle pose. Coming back up to center, parallel the feet. One more time, clasp hands, the uncommon clasping. So the way you don't usually clasp them. Inhale, reach the heart up, exhale, fold. Let the hands go, one flat back. Inhaling, I calm my body and my mind. Exhale, I smile. Coming all the way up through a flat back, little back bend. Left toes 90 degrees, bending that knee. Reaching the arms out. Looking over front middle finger. Front palm tips up, tip back, keep the legs as they are. Bringing forearm to thigh, top arm cuts over the ear. I calm my body and my mind on the inhale. I smile on the exhale. Tipping back, straighten the front leg, big inhale. Exhale, reach, reach, reach it forward, and then hand comes to the leg, Top arm comes up. Could the arms feel like one long arm? Coming back up to center in your own time. Parallel the feet once again. One more time, we'll clasp the hands behind our back, either clasping. Lift the heart, big inhale, exhale, fold. Bring the hands to the mat. Right hand, reach it in front of your face on the floor. Look under that right armpit. Reach the left arm to the right leg. Walk it down the leg, breathing there, looking under the armpit. Inhale, I calm my body and my mind. Exhale, I smile.
letting that go. Walk that left arm forward, be on the fingertips, look under the left armpit, right hand on the leg, walk it down the leg, looking under the armpit, breathing. Deep breaths. Coming back to center in your own time, scoot the feet in now. Heels in, toes out, finding a squat. So you might be up here in a squat, or you might be lower down. You'll find the squat that works for you, for your knees. A few breaths there. And then finding your way in your own time to a seat. Now we're going to find our way onto our bellies. So find your way down onto the mat. If you have any shoulder injuries, you're going to be careful with this next pose. So we're going to take the right arm out straight to the side. If there are shoulder injuries, please move the right arm towards the hip. Otherwise, it's straight out. Now we're going to begin to roll onto that right hip. My back is to you just so you can see what I'm doing. You're going to lift that left knee and bring the left foot to the floor. Your head can be on the mat, or you could bring, it on a, on, you could bring a blanket under it. You can stay right here, breathing in the twist, or you can grab with your left hand the left foot. And then you can press foot into hand. So that's kind of stretching both of your shoulders. Knee can move down towards the other knee a little bit and breathe. And then releasing, rolling back onto the belly in your own time. I'll show the other side this way. So, you, so you'll be seeing my front side now, but left arm is straight out to the side, or if there's an injury, bring the left arm down towards the hip. Begin to roll onto that left hip. Right knee bends. Head can be on the mat or a blanket. Breathing here, you could bring that hand to the hip, right hand to the hip. And then if you feel very comfortable here, you can grab that back foot with the hand and breathe. Pressing foot into hand, breathing into it. Releasing that foot, rolling back onto the belly. Press yourself back to a wide knee child's pose. Knees are wide, big toes touching. A few deep breaths here. You might come back to that mantra. I calm my body and my mind on the inhale. On the exhale, I smile. Slowly walking your hands back up, we're going to sit on the heels and then we're going to swing our legs around. And just go ahead and find your way down onto your mat. Hugging knees in. Give them a squeeze. You can roll the ankles one way and roll them the other way. So we're going to find a little core work here. <clears throat> so we're going to lift the knees up and reach towards the feet on an exhale and then bring the feet and the arms down. And actually we can, we can reach the arms overhead. So inhale here, exhale, reaching. Hinge pose a few times like this. 
Inhaling down, exhale up. Feet flat to the floor. Take the feet wide and the knees to touch and just rock side to side a few times. and then bringing the feet back in. So now we're just gonna find our block. And if you don't have a block, you can use a blanket. We're gonna lift the hips and bring the block the lowest level under the hips. And again, just kind of shimmy shoulders under you. So this is a little like bridge pose we did earlier, only now we're supported. So just a few breaths here. And then see what it's like to lift your legs up. This is supported shoulder stand. You can kind of shimmy your shoulders under you, hold the outer edges of the mat, and breathe here. We could point and flex the feet. You can roll the ankles one way and roll them the other way. And then bending the knees, bring the feet flat to the floor. Just releasing the block now, lifting the hips, releasing the block. So now, rocking up to seated, we're gonna find our way into supported fish or fish pose. So we've done a lot of shoulder opening, so your shoulders should be a little more open than they were at the beginning of class. So you're welcome to use those blocks once again or the rolled up blanket like a burrito under your shoulders. And this would be supported fish. And I'll just quickly remind you, you come down, put the block or the blanket under your shoulder blades and release. So you're either here or I'll talk you through fish pose. If you're gonna do fish pose, you're gonna come onto your back and have your knees bent to start. Put your hands around your thighs and then extend through the legs. You can point the feet. Now press into your elbows and begin to lift up, arching through the spine. And very little weight is on the head. So most of the weight is on the elbows. And then breathe into this. holding onto the thighs, pressing elbows into the floor, breathe into the expansion in the chest. And then pressing into the elbows, lifting the head and releasing back down. And just letting that go, letting your arms go, just noticing what you've done. Now you're welcome to stay right here for Shavasana. You're also welcome to join me in a seat. So that's up to you, either staying, lying down, or sitting up. and allow yourself to fully release. Or if you're sitting up, you can close the eyes and meditate for a few moments. So whichever you prefer. If you're in Shavasana, wiggle fingers and toes. 
Maybe take a full body stretch. Bending the knees, rolling up to a comfortable seat. Eyes can close. Please bring palms at heart center in front of the chest. Yoganand says, thus at a fundamental level, pranayama helps us reconnect with what we actually feel beneath the veil of what we think we feel. In connecting us to our true emotions, pranayama exposes the raw, unfiltered, luminous truth of who we really are. Inhale deeply through the nose, exhale out the mouth. Bow to your heart, bow to your practice. Namaste. The light in me bows to the light in you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope to see you soon. I hope you have enjoyed today's program. And if you would like to spend a little bit more time with this artwork, I invite you to join us in two upcoming programs, Artful Meditation and Artful Healing. Be sure to like and follow us on all of our social media accounts at Kobe Museum and visit us on our website, kobe.edu forward slash museum, where you can also subscribe to be a part of our Let Art Inspire mailing list, where you can stay updated on all of our upcoming programs, events, and so much more. And like always, from our museum home to yours, take care and I'll see you next month with another Artful Movements.